Hello, welcome back. Uh, during the last lecture, I described to you how a Carnot cycle works or a Carnot engine works. I need to uh, clarify a few things and I thought that uh, I didn't emphasize some aspects. Uh, I need to emphasize them. Uh, so here we have a Carnot engine. Uh, let's say I have described to you entire thing. This is on a PV plane how the four processes which make a Carnot cycle they are shown 1 to 2 is heat addition during which heat is added. Okay, And how the heat is added? Now here is something which you would like to uh, uh, know more, more than what I explained uh, during my last lecture. Heat is added from, it comes from the source to the working substance in the engine and this heat is added reversibly. Okay, It is added reversibly. Uh, meaning what? The temperature of the working substance which is receiving the heat is nearly same as that of the source which is TH. So there is infinitesimal temperature difference or in practical purpose you can say that throughout this 1 to 2 the gas which is receiving the heat has also the same temperature as that of the source. Okay, And source temperature is constant value which is TH. T suffix H. So throughout 1 to 2, gas is also uh, receiving the heat at the same temperature T suffix H. That means the temperature of the gas here is also T suffix H. Okay, And that means this process is uh, uh, reversible as well as isothermal. Right? If this is not isothermal, uh, you know, you can't, because this heat is coming from the source which is at temperature Th. Okay? So the gas also has to receive the heat while it itself being at the same temperature. Only then there is reversible heat transfer possible. And since the source temperature is constant, throughout this the gas temperature also has to be constant. So it is reversible and isothermal process. Now I want you to reflect on something. See, when you start adding heat to the gas, uh, what would happen? Uh, it would immediately uh, the temperature of the gas would rise. Okay, temperature would rise. So it means uh, if you if you want the temperature of the gas to be constant to be kept constant, the gas has to expand. Right? Gas has to expand. When the gas expands, uh, that means some uh, some some work is uh, done by it. there is PDV work and the internal energy of the gas drops. That means you know. What, what it means? It means the temperature also drops. So what is what has happened here is the temperature of the gas is kept constant only because the gas is also expanding. Okay? If the gas were not expanding, heat addition would not have been possible. Just think about it. Because we want reversible heat uh, transfer. So moment heat flows, some uh, amount of heat flows from the source to this gas, the gas temperature would rise. That means it, 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 there won't be any further heat transfer possible. That infinitesimal temperature difference won't be possible. So what is imagined in this Carnot engine is, see so 1 to 2, what is happening? There is reversible and isothermal heat transfer. At the same time, the gas is expanding, right? So you are getting work, right? You are getting work. But, so we say this is, in fact, it's also reversible, isothermal, not just heat addition, but also expansion. You need to remember that. So 1 to 2, uh, the gas has to expand because uh, the temperature, you know, you are adding heat, but the temperature has to be kept constant. I want you to reflect on this. This is a point which I didn't emphasize enough during my last lecture and I have compensated for that inadequacy. Okay, remaining points, I don't think I have to repeat. 2 to 3 is a reversible expansion process right and which is adiabatic also reversible adiabatic process similarly 3 to 4 is reversible and isothermal heat rejection okay heat rejection you can see that by the same logic here there was some expansion of gas now the gas uh, there is compression okay compression and then 4 to 1 is reversible um, adiabatic work input all that i have explained the only point which I wanted to explain was this about reversible isothermal heat addition and the same logic applies over here. 
uh, and you can reflect on that. Okay. Uh, now, after having done this, okay, uh, uh, I need to tell you that the, the engine which we have I have drawn here is uh, is a uh, un, uh, working is it's working at it's a non-flow process, right? The working substance is not flowing, but one could imagine a Karma engine for a flow process as well, right? Uh, for example, I could replace this piston, piston cylinder arrangement by what? I can say that there is some source temperature TH, there is some heat exchanger through which the fluid is flowing, okay? And heat is transferred to this. How much? QH. And what will be the temperature of the fluid flowing through this? It is also TH because we want reversible uh, heat transfer. And then I can show this moving ahead. I can show, say, turbine and, and there is work, right? This is work. And so if I can say that this is, um, this is point 1, this is point 2, 1 to 2 is reversible and isothermal heat addition. 2 to 3, see here, 2 to 3. There is work output. Again, the expansion here is reversible and it is adiabatic. That means there is no heat transfer uh, from the fluid to the surrounding or from the surrounding to the fluid. After reversible adiabatic heat expansion, that is 3 to 4, is reversible and isothermal heat rejection to the sink. So I can show here a, again I can show a heat exchanger through which the fluid is passing and it is rejecting heat to a sink which is at temperature TL. So TL is the sink temperature. Okay. And the fluid also here, when it rejects the heat, will also have the same temperature as TL. Remember this, because we want reversible isothermal heat rejection. Thereafter, so our, our point is 3 here, here it is 4, and then I can show some pump, some work input, right? And this is some W, I can say WP, here I can say WE. And the net work will be WE minus WP. And this work addition, that is here we have shown this is compression. compression. Um, you know, you can say it's compression. And this is from 4 to 1. 4 to 1. And how is that? It is again reversible and adiabatic. Right? So reversible and adiabatic. What, one, what, 4 to 1 and 2 to 3 are reversible adiabatic lines. 1 to 2 and 3 to 4 are reversible isothermal lines okay right so this same engine right now here what we have done is uh, it's a flow process it is a flow process earlier one was non-flow process okay uh, you can see that the entire engine is operating between two temperature limits so temperature on this side right on this side see here um, temperature here is 1 to 2 is 3, so 1 to 2, sorry, 1 to 2 is pH, so temperature here, from 1 to 2, this region, it is pH, below this, right, here, 3 to 4, it is TL, the fluid temperature is TL, so every uh, heat engine, in fact, operates between these temperature limits, pH and TL, and uh, in Carnot engine, there are certain ideal processes imagined, thank you.